this is Dr. J. Smith here in my office, as you can tell. And I was just sent a short clip from Yasser Qadi uh, by Islamic Clarity. I'd like to, you to look at it real quickly. It's only 30 seconds. Watch this. And also I want to make an announcement here as well that uh, I, am, I am very serious. This is not just statements. I'm very serious, inshallah, of slowly withdrawing from social media um, completely and, uh, and having alternative platforms because I feel that um, uh, I, I am not... Um, I, I don't want to be involved too longer on public platforms and I'm going to be gravitating towards uh, not being involved in public anymore. Uh, and I'm just I'm just keep preparing the way for that, inshallah, ta'ala, before it happens. Inshallah, this is my goal in a few years at max, inshallah. Okay, you can see Yasser Qadi is now officially saying that he's going to be leaving social media, which means these platforms that he's on. Uh, that is up on his site and that was uh, just uh, from a video that he just put up two days ago in on Monday, we're now in Wednesday, where he's claiming that he's going to stop all of his work on social media. And the entire video is about refutation and the pros and cons of refutation. And he goes through an entire historical survey of where it's worked and where it's not worked. And then he makes his claim in that video. Now, Everybody has been asking me, can you say something about this, Jay? Is this because of that disastrous interview that he had four months ago? It could well be. It could well be that this is Yasser Qadi hedging his bets and uh, admitting that maybe he needs to get off this platform because of what happened back on June 8th with Mohammed Hijab. Possibly. Or it could be his. he's just getting exhausted because he, listen, he has been putting up these videos one after another and he has so many different venues that he can speak at. Albeit, if you look uh, on his YouTube channel, you will notice that he has around 370,000 subscribers. So he's got an enormous following. And it does not stand to reason that he would leave such a big following like that with that much influence. As we well know, YouTube is where you do get the influence. I think it's more likely that he is pulling back from other platforms, especially uh, having interviews like happened in June 8th. He doesn't want those kind of interviews, and he doesn't want to deal with controversial subjects, because this is very clear in the video that he has there. Th that refutation, as he says over and over again, there are many times you just do not talk to fools. And uh, uh, the best thing when a fool asks a question is to say nothing. Don't give them any oxygen, as he says in this video. And I think that's what he's talking about. He does, there are certain questions he just won't answer. And that came out, was very clear in the interview that he had with Muhammad Hijab. Remember when Muhammad Hijab talked about the Kira? Now, I've, I've got about nine Kira's right here that I uh, was able to buy in just the last two months online. You can get them as well. Nine different ones here. You have Shoba, um, Duri, Khalaf, Al Kisai, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amir. Kalun, Wash, and Hafs. So those you can get. They're easily available. It's nothing that's really hidden. There's nothing about the Kira that is not well known. You can go up on you uh, on Wikipedia and you can go up and actually type in Kira and you will see the 30 official Kira that are recognized today by Islam. So nothing that Muhammad Hijab was asking him was really out of the ordinary. It was that he was asked which is the one that existed in heaven or exists in heaven which is the one that was revealed to muhammad which is the one that uh, uthman would have had written which is that that Qureshi dialect that's what he was really asking and you can see why he recoiled at that time and this is the problem with public media this is the difficulty with any public media especially here in the west especially here in the west you don't ask certain questions. You just take it as a given. He talked about the line where beyond which they don't go. They have a respect for the Quran beyond which they don't go. A red line that he talked about. There's a red line beyond which we don't go beyond. And here, Muhammad Hijab was asking him to go beyond that line. He didn't feel comfortable at all. And that's 
a problem with interviews if you're being filmed and you're being filmed live you've got to answer the question you look like a fool and he even mentioned that he says the west is looking at us and we look like the emperor with no clothes and that's exactly how he felt in that interview that's exactly how he feels when asked these kind of questions like the kid at. and that was the problem he had when he was at yale university back in 1995 25 years ago when he came across this problem and didn't have an answer for it and he had a crisis not of faith as he's made very clear but a crisis of knowledge so you can understand then why he possibly is pulling back which to me makes an awful lot of sense for honest Muslims it, this is a question that honest Muslims really can't answer and it is a question that we in the West especially those of us who come from a biblical background who have had every question throughout the Bible we can we don't have this difficulty of answering difficult questions there is no question you can ask of the Bible that we if we don't know the answer we will find the answer there is nothing there is no red line beyond which you cannot ask that we have with biblical criticism biblical criticism is historical criticism uh, many of the redactic and source and all these different criticism that we have within historical criticism were not so much created but were really to, to, came into maturity by applying it to the Bible. And this has never been done to the Quran, and that's why when Muhammad Hijab asked that really simple question, if I give you a blank piece of paper, what are you going to write on it? Which one of these are you going to write? Which one will it be? Will it be Hafs? Will it be Warsh? Will it be Kalun? Will it be Ibn Amir? Will it be Ibn Kathir? Will... And it goes on and on and on to 30 of them. And his response was, don't ask me that question. This is something we don't talk about in public. And finally, after 25 minutes of insisting, asking him a second time, which are you going to write on it? What did Yasser Qadi finally admit? Well, he finally admitted. They're all the Quran. All of these are the Quran. Just take a look at these two right here. One, two. These two right here. This is the Warsh I have in this hand, and this is the Hafs I have in this hand. These are the two most popular Qurans in the world today. There are 5,000 differences between these two Qurans that our team in Australia has now been able to find. 5,000 differences, folks. You cannot say that these are both the Quran. Not with 5,000 differences. Which is the one, even if there's one difference, and remember, it is Yasser Qadi. Let me just re show you this clip again. The Quran is the most protected of all scriptures. And in fact, we as Muslims believe that God in his divine wisdom and plan has protected the Quran from any type of alteration, from any type of deviation, from any type of, of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, mis of miswriting, because the Quran tells us that God has revealed this Quran and he is going to protect it. And we believe that the Caliph Uthman's actions were actions that are very logical, very reasonable, and they ensured the protection of the actual script of the Quran. All future Qurans, even up to our times, conform letter for letter, word for word with the Quranic Mus'habs. To this day, there is no different version of the Qur'an. There is but one Qur'an. Remember, it is he that has said over and over again, there is not one word, there is not one letter that is different. They are all exactly the same. Every Qur'an around the world has the same words, the same letters as the Qur'an that was revealed to Muhammad between 610 and 632, was finally written down and canonized by Uthman in 652. This Qur'an that we have in our hand today that was finally chosen as the official Quran, why do they even have to choose it? Why do you have to choose one Quran? Why there in 1924 in Cairo did they have to choose this Quran? Because there was 20 other, 29 others that disagreed with it. That's why they had to choose it, and that's why they had to take the other 29 and dump them into the Nile. You don't dump them into the Nile. You don't make a choice unless, of course, there's a difference, and that's why he did not know how to answer that. And so what was his answer finally? They're all the Quran. All 30 of them are the Quran. Our team in the UK has already come up with 93,000 differences between just 23 of them. Just 23 of them. No wonder he has to pull back now. No wonder he had to delete that interview from his site. No wonder Muhammad Hijab had to finally delete it from his site. They don't want you to see that interview anymore. They don't want you to hear that question being asked. Just like when we showed those 26 Qurans, here they are, here's a picture of it, the 26 Qurans back in 2016, when Hatun and I and our team there at Speaker's Corner in London held them up and showed 26 of them back in 2016, four years ago. Muhammad Hijab was in the, was there, you can see him, look at him, there he is. He was in the crowd. And that's where his crisis of faith began. Now, the question is, will Yasser Khadi really get off social media? That he said so? 
two days ago. Look at the very end and you'll remember what he said. In a few years, this will take him a few years. So he's pulling back slowly by slowly. And what I think he's doing, he's hedging his bets. What I think he's doing, he's wanting to make sure that now every interview that he is going to be, into, he participates in, he will first ask, what is the question? What is the subject asked? He will choose what he wants to be asked, and he will only let himself be interviewed on those subjects that don't go beyond that line, that don't go beyond that red line. Thank God we don't have that with the Bible. Thank God we don't sit there and negate anybody from asking us any question at any time, anywhere, about anything. And that's the beauty of our Bible. Our Bible can be asked every question, has been asked every question. And our Bible that I have here stands heads and shoulder above these Qurans because it has passed every test. And we don't have to fly away and move away and censor ourselves or stop being on social media because we have nothing to apologize for this Bible compared to that Quran. Okay, this is Jathan over now.